Today we head to one of the more fascinating airports that we've been to, Mojave Air and Spaceport. Now, why is it called the Spaceport? Because it launches spacecrafts. The difference with this airport is, is that unlike the vertical launches that we're very familiar with with rockets, this is horizontal launches. An example of a horizontal launch is when the X-15 launched itself after being carried eight and a half miles high by a B-52. And that's one of many historical accomplishments that have happened at this airport. One of the coolest things this airport is known for though is the Boneyard, which you can see at the far end right side of the runway. Runway 30 is 12,500 feet long and 200 feet wide. So that pretty much means you can land anything on this runway, which this airport's history can definitely confirm. And since this is the high desert, that means the winds are changing constantly and that's both in speed and direction. So always check the weather. And if you're gonna come here during the summer, it's highly advised that you come during the morning because I've seen the afternoons go from 36 knots to gusting 54, which is just crazy to me. And since it also gets really hot above 100 degrees, density altitude is something to also keep in mind. Again, this is a 12 and a half thousand foot runway and I could have definitely landed long, which I highly recommend. But at least now you get to admire all the planes in the boneyard. So we visited on the weekend when towers closed. On the weekdays though, they're open from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. We definitely wanna visit during the week, especially with Edwards being only a few miles away. Never know, we might be able to see a B-21 or something. You can see the boneyard to the right there. Now, as far as we know, there's no way to actually walk the boneyard. Now, we are definitely hoping we're wrong. So if you guys know anything different, please let us know. Now we'll link a website that has a so-called virtual tour of the airport. Obviously it's nothing like actually being there, but at least it gives you a little bit of history of different locations and landmarks. But if you're there on the weekends and are departing on whichever runway, just make your crosswind towards the planes and at least you get a good bird's eye view of the entire boneyard. We got there relatively early that day and as you can tell from the windsock winds were pretty calm but that was definitely a different story when we departed
So when you get here, do not leave without visiting the pilot's lounge. The hallway to get there has all these pictures of all the history of accomplishments that have been done at this airport. So I highly, highly recommend. Take some time, walk around. It's really cool, all the pictures that they have. One thing I have to say about the cafe is hands down has the best hash browns I've ever had. And I don't even like hash browns, but take that for what it's worth. A couple of things about transient parking is they use ropes for tie downs and there's about six parking spots. I'd highly recommend always tie down your plane because again, you never know when those winds are gonna come. Right, checklist time if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you don't want to miss our next cool airport please subscribe and if you have any questions about this airport or you just want to tell me that i gave some wrong information we love to hear good and bad please leave a comment all right checklist complete the boneyard is enough reason to visit this airport but once you start looking into the history it becomes even more fascinating so i highly highly recommend you guys take time when you go visit mojave